Good morning and good afternoon. This is John Corcoran, the Executive Director of the American Rose Society. So glad you joined us on this Saturday. Uh, we are week two of the Northeast Region Horticulture Judges Seminar. Uh, so glad to have Dr. Annie Plaz here, along with our president, Diane Summers. Uh, there will be Kim Merritt, who normally does all this, will not be in today. So I'm gonna try to substitute just a little bit for her. Probably won't do as good, but we will definitely try. Uh, Ms. Carol Spears, while you're going through this webinar, will be answering questions in the chat pod. Uh, and she will be trying to do that as we go all the way through. Once we start the program and at the end of it, we will have a 30 minute question and answer period. If you do have questions, please go to the uh, questions pod and there, and we will definitely try to answer those questions. We'll ask you to raise your hand and unmute yourself. Uh, we will also unmute you, and at that point, you will be able to ask Dr. Plaz any questions that you may have. I uh, thank you all for joining us, and thank you for being a part of our webinars. And I always tell you to stay tuned, including the next webinar for next week. It will be going out on Monday, and we will have this webinar posted up on our what YouTube channel and a link from our website. So now I will hand this over to Miss Linda Kimmel. Linda? Hi, I want to thank everybody uh, for attending today, spending part of your Saturday with us. I also want to thank Kim and John and all the American Rose Society staff who makes these webinars possible. Thank you, because I know you work all week and then you spend your Saturdays with us and we do very much appreciate it. So I'm going to introduce Andy Plass, Andrew, Dr. Andrew Plass, <laughs> affectionately known to us as Andy. He's a longtime friend, a mentor, and member of the Illinois Indiana District as He's a member of three local Rose Societies. So two of those are in Wisconsin. So he also is very active in the Wisconsin and North Central District. So um, he's well known for his excellent programs using chemicals in the garden, treating black spot, that kind of thing. And was awarded um, in 2009, the Klima Award for his excellent programs. In 2016, he was awarded the Blake Hedrick Award. He's an avid exhibitor. He's won multiple national awards. He served on the um, Rose Exhibitors Forum and several other positions in terms of uh, writing the arrangement or writing the horticulture judges rules. So we appreciate all of his work. He's also a CR, a master rosarian, uh, ARS Hort Judge, International Rose Judge. His credentials are too many to read, so I'm not going to go through all of them, but we very much appreciate him giving this program today, and I know it's going to be excellent, and you're going to enjoy it, and you're going to learn a lot, and thank you, Andy, very much for the time that you've spent preparing this and also giving your Saturday to present this to us. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Okay, we ready to go? Yes, sir. Okay, let's uh, change slides then. Okay, the th I had three parts to give here today. One was the anatomy, and one was the uh, uh, terms uh, in the chapters two, three, and four, and then uh, uh, disqualifications, and these are two, three, and four in the uh, uh, judge's manual. I decided, decided to start out with Rose Anatomy, and we'll go through this, and hopefully I will be able to answer all your questions. Uh, I'm not an expert on this. I'm a chemist, not a botanist, but we'll see what we can do. Okay, Rose Anatomy. A Rose judge needs knowledge of all the anatomical parts and terminology of the rose, and this is because you're judging this uh, a wonderful uh, 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 thing given to us by Mother Nature, so we've got to have that. It facilitates the communication with other rose judges, and it aids in the identification of key parts of the rose. It establishes a base for typical of the variety. We're going to be talking about that a lot. Typical of the variety is what you usually expect to see on a good specimen 
in gardens, in rose shows, or in exhibitions. Now, we're going to talk also about stamens for judging single petaled varieties and the texture and shape of petals, and of course, the thorns, which are botanically prickles. Either one will do as an answer on the exam. Next slide, please. Okay, this is a slide that appears in a horticultural judge's manual. This slide was created in the uh, uh, late 60s or early 70s by my good friend, Dr. Arnell Potter. It still is useful today. So we're going to go through this because this is stuff you're going to have to know for the exam. If you're taking the exam, I guarantee you, you're going to see a lot of this on the exam. So let's start out the way I always start out in this is I start out in the upper right hand corner on this with the specimen. The specimen is the whole thing that you see there from where it's cut off to the top of the rose bloom where the corolla is. The corolla or petals are the rose itself. Now, as we go down here, hopefully I'll get everything in and we'll get it right so we'll get it. As you go down this part between the bottom of the uh, calyx tube on the rose or at to the top of the bract is called the peduncle. And that's what leads into the stem. The bracts are two minor pieces of foliage that you see there. And they are uh, uh, not always just one set. Sometimes you can have two, and I've seen some roses with three. Now, as we go down the stem, on the left, you'll see leaf axil. That's the place where the leaf joins the stem. Going down a little further, we see the leaf axil, and there's a bud eye in it. And that's where the new growth will come on that stem, most probably the uh, strongest stem that will come on it. And then lastly, down there just below that is the thorn, the thorn or the prickle. So this is your basic fundamental stem of what it looks like. This is the uh, 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 thing you would bring to a row show, the, the part of the rose that you bring. You cut it and bring it to a row show. And that's what the judges are going to be looking at. So you need to understand all of those things because you're going to be talking with other judges. You're going to be discussing sometimes four or five really good roses in one class, <clears throat> and they're very much equivalent, but you're going to have to pick first, second, third, and fourth. And that sometimes may not easy, be easy, and it may come down to some of the uh, things that uh, you're seeing here today. So we've gone from the stem and the uh, specimen down to the lower right-hand corner where we have the leaflet. Now, this is a, a picture of the leaf, and this whole stem from the parts of the leaf down below it to the top is called the leaf. The leaves are called leaflets. So the one at the top is the terminal leaflet. And it is attached to the petiole. The petiole runs from the bottom of the terminal leaflet to the auricle, which is the entry part of the uh, 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 stipule where it's attached to the uh, uh, Eventually, the stipule is attached to the stem. So what you have here are terminal leaflets, regular leaflets, and the petiole. Now, you'll see another thing just beneath the leaflet sign there called petiole. That's the little part of the stem of the leaflet which is attached to the petiole. Going further down the stem here, we have the oracle. That is where actual petiole attaches to the stipule, which then goes back to the stem. So those are things you'll probably have to know. You should know that and realize what they are. And I'll tell you what I do. I, when I took this test the first time a long time ago, in the back of the book here, our uh, horticultural judges manual, which is way too long, but at least the anchor part of it is something really useful, is the glossary. Now, what I did was I took and I copied that glossary. And I took everything that was related to the reproductive parts of the rose 
and outlined them in yellow. So I had a definition there that I could study and look at and find. Then for the leaves, the leaflets, etc., they're green, right? So I made all of those markers in green. Lastly, I picked orange for the flower or the bloom part. Yeah, I think if you do this and you're going through it and you're having any problems, this will help you get through whatever you have to on the, this part. It's a big part of the exam and you have to know it. Now, hopefully that'll work out for you. Now, we're gonna go back here now to in the upper right. And what you see there is the calyx. Calyx goes from the bottom of the calyx tube to the top of the sepals. And normally what you have there are the sepals which protect the bud until it starts to form the actual petals of the flower. And so when it happens is when the bud starts to form, as you'll see just below it where it says below the word calyx, the corolla or petals will start to unfurl and the sepals will drop. So the next slide, the next picture down shows you the corolla or the petals in there. And now we're going to talk about some of the reproductive parts of the rose. What you have here in the uh, uh, one is the actual ovary, and you can see stamens, and you can see uh, corolla and petals in that slide, and the carpels. What happens is that this thing that you're looking at there is the pistil. It contains the carpels, or the ovary, style, and the stigma. And what it is, is that the carpels are the ones that are coming up through the style to the stigma. It's, they're from the ovary and they're containing whatever the reproductive enzymes and stuff are in there. Now, what happens if you look here at the bottom left, you have a picture of the corolla or petals and you see there the disc. And in the center of that disc is the stigma. On the stigma is the sticky part that will accept pollen from someplace else so that a seed can form in the ovary. On the other hand, you can see the stamens. The stamens will hopefully be taken by a bee or a butterfly or something else, and that pollen moved to somewhere else and uh, uh, spread around whatever nature wants. But our hybridizers collect that pollen off those stamens and selectively apply them to the stigma in another rose. So these are the basic parts of the anatomy of the rose. And uh, let's go on to the next slide, please. Okay, this is the slide I really like of this because it's in color and this is what should be in our judging map. And it's got some of the definitions of what's going on here of all these parts of the rose. For instance, the sepals, it says part of the calyx protecting the bloom during opening. Great. And then the calyx tube, it supports the petals and eventually becomes a ripe hip. That's if it's pollinated and there's a, a, a seed forming in the ovary. The pedicel is a side bud here. And that's not in our uh, 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 vocabulary, but it's probably not that important anyhow. Now the corolla or petals are here and the petals surround the reproductive portion of the bloom, which is the stamens that you see inside for the pollen that's transmitted. And then you can see the disc that's in there that they would drop the uh, uh, pollen on from supposedly another rose to help make a, 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 a new rose after they cut pollen stamens out of this rose when they hybridize. The stigma is that sticky part that helps that pollen assist to that. And then you can see the leaves down here in the vascular part of the plant and the prickles and the adnate stipple there and then the peduncle which attaches to the regular stem. Next slide, please. Uh, I think that learning this stuff is really important. And one of the people we had in the Illinois Indiana District who was our chairman of judges for many years was a really, really quality and knowledgeable and smart individual. Uh, a mentor that really, really stood above the rest, and that's Dr. Anthony Liberta. And I'm going to read this to you because I think this is important. And this is in our judges, horticultural judges manual, because it's the best way of saying what we want to get across. across. A thorough background in rose anatomy 
and its terminology can enable a judge to avoid mistakes in interpretation when conferring with fellow judges. <clears throat> Hecarit communication is thwarted. For example, if a judge refers to a peduncle as a stem when discussing an entry, a conscious judge will employ every available tool to make informed evaluations of specimens encountered in row shows. That says it all right there, that sentence. One of the most valuable of these is a familiarity with the anatomical features discussed herein. It is important that every judge become competent in basic rose anatomy in order to bring uniformity to the judging process. The judge with a thorough knowledge of botanical parts of the plant can communicate what he or she sees to fellow judges so as to know as there is no mistake in interpretation. Thank you, Tony, for something really well said. Next slide, please. Now we're going to move from the anatomy <clears throat> to the common phrases defined. And uh, this is actually chapter before the anatomy, but here we go. The first thing we're going to talk about is exhibition form versus exhibition stage versus exhibition bloom. Yes, there are three kinds of terms here, okay? And there actually possibly should be a fourth, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Exhibition form means the classic hybrid T form, I center, beautiful uh, uh, spiral uh, uh, placement of the petals so that it, 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 it kind of unfurls in a perfect pattern. And it's what we want to see. Exhibition stage depends on how many petals. Some of these are lighter petaled roses. Some of them are only five petaled roses. And then there's the ones in here for the exhibition stage that are like the David Austin roses. Those are also exhibition stage. They have no hybrid T form, and they usually sometimes have 50, 60 petals. So they fall in the same class as this exhibition stage. <clears throat> An exhibition bloom is one bloom per stem, no side buds. Those are the three terms. And so we'll talk about that in a little bit with some uh, diagrams here. The most perfect phase of pop possible beauty. It refers to the exhibition stage subjective as beauty. And it's often in the eyes of the beholder. And I can tell you that we all see good things in every rose. But some of us, even judges, see more good things in some specimens than in others. And it's great to be able to discuss this with the other judges is what we see is good and what we see brings out the best in a specimen and uh, uh, maybe the way it's uh, uh, been uh, uh, groomed, et cetera, et cetera. But it is really a, a pleasant thing to do, a great way to spend uh, some morning at a rose show judging roses. <clears throat> Typical of the variety. Hmm. What does that really mean? It means we reward specimens exhibiting superior qualities above that of the typical of the variety. And there are uh, uh, some specimens that are always rising above the rest, whether it be in stem and foliage, whether it be in form, whether it be in color uh, or size. Judges, to, okay, the next is the set standard of perfection, okay? In order to assess the typical uh, variety, we have to develop our own mental set of standards. <clears throat> the six prime elements explain each set standard and establishes a base for typical of variety. Bill Kosmachak will be covering this in week four. Next slide, please. Okay, what's not to like about this? This is through exhibition form. This is Marilyn Monroe. It is a beautiful specimen. It's got a pointed center. It's high. It's got the nice spiral type uh, 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 movement of the uh, 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 petals as they're unfurling, and it's clean as a whistle. Wow, what's not to like about that? Next slide, please. Next, there we go. Now, same rows. Now, Along with this, it's got that perfect symmetrical form. As you put that circle around this rose and you look at it, you say, goodness, that's really, really nice. And a rose like this is much better than typical of the variety. This rose has uh, uh, got champion uh, 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 
all marked all over it here as you see it. This is what you want to see. This is what you're looking for. The only thing it has in its way are other varieties that may have even better higher marks above typical of the variety. And that is for us judges to decide as we measure the beauty that's put before us. Next slide, please. Ah, this is exhibition stage. This is one was actually taken in my yard, it's Rosa Rugosa. And it's only got five petals, but the stamens are beautiful. The petals are unfurling. We got a little bit of a crinkle on the edges as you're looking at it. And, uh, but still, this would be a blue ribbon exhibit unless there was a better specimen of Rosa rugosa in there. And that is a good example of exhibition stage with fewer petals. Now there are other roses that open up. This rose has five petals that have 10, 12 petals and like dancing pink and some of the others. And they are also exhibition stage type. Next slide, please. Oops, go back one. This is an example of exhibition stage of a rose with that form much like the uh, David Austin roses. This was the best of show at the National Convention in Philadelphia. This type of rose is a form of exhibition stage and it's got everything you're looking for in a, uh, an example of that, a spray. We ought to have uh, something in there like a, a exhibition stage on a single and maybe even on a spray, we should call it. So anyway, next slide, please. What I've presented here are four different slides of four different types of roses that have exhibition stage in different types of, uh, 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 what would you say, form. Let's start on uh, your right side there. In the top is a spray of Gemini. My goodness, that's nine roses, a really smashing spray, all basically in the same form, nice circular, uh, 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 swirls in the bloom except for one, and it really, really looks like a wonderful spray. Just below it is a spray of joy, and it's a joy to look at that. Seven perfect blooms, and it's just a, a, a magnificent specimen. These are hybrid tea form in a spray, and it's exhibition form for that. On the left, we have Passionate Kisses. It's a rose that's probably got uh, 17 to 20 petals. And a nice thing about this is it's, you got everything from a bud right in the middle there, which is filling in a gap, the various openings of the petals. It's fresh. And you'll notice with the uh, 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 ellipse or, uh, drawn around it, it's got nice geometrical form, just a beautiful spray. Down below, we have Rhapsody in Blue, a shrub. Five open blooms, just smashing with the stamens. Now you might say, well, it looks like up in the upper left-hand corner, there's a little hole developed there uh, in between the uh, uh, two most left roses. But if you look at that top rose, you can see that that rose is just opening at this time. And as the day goes on or whatever, it'll probably fill in most of that gap there. And we have four good examples here of exhibition stage. Next slide, please. Exhibition bloom. One bloom, no side buds. That's the way it is. Excuse the uh, typo. These buds have to come off. Those two buds in there have to come off. They have to come off at the uh, uh, main stem. And uh, otherwise, it's not an exhibition bloom. An exhibition bloom is one bloom. No side buds, no nothing else. Next slide, please. Balance and proportion. This is something I wanted to bring up, although we'll cover it in week four, is that many times, especially with the new roses we're finding that are uh, coming out, uh, uh, proven winners and all the rest of it, we got a lot of different types of sprays and things like that. And balance and proportion is important. Normally, five to seven times the uh, uh, bloom height is used for hybrid teas. And what happens in this is that 
uh, 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 sometimes it's just not there and it's harder to get in our new uh, types of roses that are coming out. Let me tell you a story about balance and proportion. We were at the uh, uh, North Central District show in Kenosha, Wisconsin. And there were uh, two big blooms up there, I think it was a keepsake and something else. And they were queen and king. And then there was this smaller rose by about six or seven inches. It was a first prize. And uh, we had this exhibitor, Bob Woodworth, who had the queen. He didn't get king, but he was hoping to get the, the bronze medal too and said what's that runt doing up there on the table and Paula Ballin who judge said that runt is the best bloom in the show by far we could mark down every other bloom three or four points off of it let me show you and she went over there and she picked up that base and brought it to Woodworth and Woodworth looked down and said whoa I have voted for that for queen over mine so Balance and proportion is important, but you can overcome it if you've got a really, really outstanding bloom. Next slide, please. Now we're going to talk about common phrases. Degree of impairment. When we're looking at a rose as a judge, we're looking for the most perfect phase of its possible beauty. And that set standard of perfection for the variety is in the back of our minds. So as we approach the bloom, we start to look at that bloom and say, okay, this has got this, this, that. And it says, next thing is important. A fault in any of the six elements of judging is a penalty. Right, Not, nothing's absolutely perfect. How much the fault distracts and de de determines, de de distracts, <laughs> determines the degree of impairment. Three Ds in a row, tough for me. Let me give you an example. You've got this great rose, and it could lose a point in all six categories, but still would have a point status of 94, which is pretty darn good, because you're looking at seven and eight sometimes as the, the uh, uh, your uh, typical of the variety. And so this is pretty darn good. So you, it doesn't matter if it's got six elements, each with a fault. It's still a very good rose because we didn't take off very much for each of those six elements. Large rose. A large rose is any specimen of a, a, a variety that is not a miniature mini floor. All other things being equal. Two specimens with the characteristics of equal value. Size may be the determining factor. Like it was in that example I previously gave you, not only determining factor, but getting it on the court with the bronze certificate. You have to know them to grow them. Judges have a responsibility to be familiar with as many varieties as possible by growing, showing, visiting gardens, and row shows. And I think we all enjoy visiting gardens and row shows, and we grow and show because we like to be around people that like roses. And this is a, 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 a good thing. And I think that as you go along in your career, you'll find that uh, uh, the more varieties you find that you're experienced with, the better you'll be in, uh, as a judge. The specimen is overgrown. <laughs> Good culture that results in a superior specimen should not be penalized. But a penalty could be assessed for balance and proportion. Remember our earlier example that we talked about with the uh, 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 first prize. A penalty was assessed for balance and proportion because the stem couldn't be any longer. Next slide, please. Disqualification. Okay. At the San Diego Convention Fall 2018, someone from the audience asked, what we were going to do about the amount of pages given to the topic, which is disqualification, in the judge's manual, when the rest of the rose world is not as obsessed with this being the word disqualification. The word disqualification and its forms appear 64 times in our judge's manual. The rest of the rose exhibiting world does not even mention it, except in England, where it's mentioned just a few times. 
the judging manuals for other large exhibiting nations, Australia, England, Japan, and New Zealand, and since I've learned Uruguay and Canada, are also much smaller than our judging manual, which repeats the same thing many times. Okay, next slide, please. I'm the one that said that and asked that question at the San Diego meeting. But I wanna tell you that I personally commend the effort that has been put forth the last four years to simply simplify, clarify, and mitigate the issue of disqualification. When you start out with something that is so rampant throughout a manual, you can't take it out in a few years. You've got to go through it, they've got to vote on it, we've got to figure out what it is. We had gone from appearing 64 times in the judge's manual in 2018 to 50 times in the 2021 version. That's not bad. That's an improvement. And we need to continue to step forward and see what we can do to make sure that the judge's manual is a, a, a little more clear and maybe not so domineering on disqualification. That being said, as judges, the task is simple. We have to follow the rules. I don't personally like all the judge disqualification rules, but we're a rules judge and we have obligations. So we have to follow the rules. We are very, very lucky being rose judges. We get to evaluate one of nature's best art forms, the rose, sometimes several times in a growing season. There is a system of six categories we use to decide the award, whatever ribbon it gets and then beyond. Our job is to measure how the specimen conforms to the criteria. Next slide, please. Disqualification and penalization. A disqualified entry is removed from competition and is not eligible to receive award, an award, period. If we disqualify it, it is not eligible for an award. However, if there is any doubt about the certainty of the, of the offense, the judge must never disqualify an entry. You have to be absolutely certain before you can disqualify. If the entry is dis DQ'd, the judge must write the reason on the back of the upper portion of the entry tag. You must do that. You can't just leave the poor exhibitor sitting out there wondering why. And that's especially true with our young folks that are coming in or our new folks are uh, uh, starting out. You know, they're going to make some mistakes. If disqualified for being misnamed, the judge should write the correct name so the exhibitor will not make the same mistake again. Okay, next slide, please. Stem on stem. Okay, here's a change. Stem on stem is not, and I emphasize not with capital N-O-T, a disqualification under any circumstances, period. Case closed. Stem on stem is only a potential penalization. And right now, I wish I'd have put potential in caps. <clears throat> the stem on stem may detract from the beauty of the entry and may be penalized. But remember, the stem and foliage are only 20% of the overall score, and this is from the book. But you gotta remember another thing, that of that 20 points, most of us take and give 10 points to the foliage and 10 points to the stem. So really, you should not be uh, penalizing very much if it's only 10% of the total of the overall score. Stem on stem below the lip of the vase is irrelevant. Judges are not permitted to remove an entry from the vase to examine it under any circumstance, period. Side buds. Side buds are not a disqualification under any circumstance. They are a potential, and this, I should have capitalized that, penalization. Judges should not overly penalize entries that have side buds or immature side growth. Next slide, please. Disqualification rules. Okay. Foreign substance. The presence of a foreign substance is a disqualification. Absolutely. No dyes, no uh, paint over a, a disbudding scar, et cetera, et cetera. It's just not, not allowed. A foreign substance is anything that has been applied to the stem 
foliage and or bloom to appear to improve the appearance of the entry. If there is a question as to the presence of a foreign substance, the entry may be penalized instead of disqualified and it would be penalized as not typical of the variety and probably discounted significantly in the uh, total points awarded to that specimen. Next slide, please. Okay, this is gonna take a few minutes, but we're gonna get through it. Only reasons to disqualify an entry. First one, and most important, the foreign substance that has been applied to enhance the beauty of the entry. We just discussed that, and uh, uh, I think that uh, that's pretty much uh, says it right there. Misnamed. The name of the rose is neither the variety name on the entry tag nor an accepted synonym thereof. So if it's misnamed, yeah. We're going to talk a little bit more about how we can mitigate some of this in a little bit. Unlabeled or mislabeled. Okay. It's unlabeled or mislabeled. Entry tag lacks the exhibitor's name, it lacks, lacks an entry tag for the exhibitor's name, class number, and or the variety is not given on the entry tag. Clerks should check these things. Hopefully we checked a lot of them before the judges come into the room so they can be fixed up and, and changed. However, if you leave your name off and they don't know whose it is, uh, there's not much hope unless somebody else knows whose it is. If the exhibitor's name is visible, this should be corrected before the entry is judged. The clerks can do this. They can go through, they're usually you're, on, well, you're in the A's and the B's, and they can go down the line and look at everything else and make sure that all the entry tags are closed and the exhibitor's name is not visible. An entry that was not grown outdoors. Well, that may be pretty hard to prove. But there are some signs sometimes, such as a uh, forest rose, et cetera, et cetera, or something like that, that was maybe uh, put in the show. But, you know, you really got to be sure on that before you uh, qualify. And uh, uh, if it is, though, then you got to disqualify. An entry that was not grown by the exhibitor. Okay, we'll talk a little bit about uh, that, I think, a little bit down the line and violation of show rules. Okay, before we talk about violation of show rules, this is where I bring it up. You're a judge. You're going to the show. You get the schedule, either electronically or in the mail, on uh, paper. Your job as a judge is to read that thing from beginning to end so you understand show rules of the show you are judging. All shows are not the same. All shows are not created equal. All roses are not created equal. And I can guarantee you that all show schedules are not created equal. So it's your job to get in there and read that. If you got any questions, bring them up at the judges meeting before you go out onto the floor, start looking at stuff and run into problems. It's your responsibility as a judge to make sure that you've got that end of this under control. And you're going out there to have fun. You don't want to be out there and finding out that you're stumbling because you did not read the schedule. And for heaven's sakes, if you don't understand something, ask the question. Okay. Violation of show rules. Specifically, a challenge class or collection entry that does not satisfy the composition and or staging requirements of the class in which it was entered. Okay. If it was me... I wouldn't write on the uh, uh, tag that it was disqualified. I would write on there, not as per show schedule. If it doesn't meet that, just write it, doesn't meet show schedule. It takes the disqualification part out and doesn't make other people come by and see that big disqualified on the tag. And you accomplish the same thing in a more kinder, gentler way, and you get the job done and you probably have uh, uh, some impact on the uh, 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 exhibitor. That's at least, you know, you're not disqualified. An entry with a class res uh, with restricted eligibility 
that the exhibitor is not eligible to enter. Again, not per schedule. If it's a, a, something like a, a junior class or something that's got stuck in the wrong way somewhere, just write that on there nicely. When expressly prohibited by the show rules, entries made in, an, in the name of an absent exhibitor. Same thing again. I don't know how they're going to figure that out, though, because, you know, they got to go around and look at all the tags, and that may come out later on, but you're not going to look at the names to see if you've got absent exhibitors. But if that's the rule, it eventually would have to be disqualified or not per show schedule. Now, unless expressly permitted by show rules, separate entries from the same garden by two or more exhibitors. Let me explain to you these exceptions. In the judges class that comes in, we've got the husband and wife both coming, let's say, with entries. Each one may enter even the same rows from the same, same uh, variety from the same garden because we especially let that go because of the uh, uh, judging. The other thing is that uh, You've got a family, and they've got roses. And let's say the junior has a separate plot, and they enter something in there from that, and the uh, folks who are adults enter something in the uh, uh, adult class for that. That's not a problem. That's not a problem at all. That's allowed. Unless expressly permitted by show rules, multiple entries by the same exhibitor in the same class. In other words, more than one. Read the schedule, see if they allow one, see if they allow two, see if they allow three. Our shows are getting mighty skimpy lately due to lack of exhibitors. And as a result, what we have to do is say, why would we not have pe allow people to enter two of an entry? The same variety. So think about that as you're going along. Next slide, please. More disqualification rules. Oh, how about that? Misplaced. A misplaced entry is neither disqualified nor penalized, no matter who was responsible for the misplacement, whether it was the exhibitor or the committee. All misplaced entries are moved to the correct class and judged, period. If that class has already been judged, the judges of that class must rejudge the class to determine the awards. <clears throat> that's the way that that's a really good way to handle this. And then we don't have misplaced entries being disqualified. I really like this suggestion. I uh, hope that we all follow this. Misclassed, incorrect class on entry tag. Move to the correct class and judge. If the class has been judged, the judges of that class must rejudge the class to determine the awards. I judged a Rose show here just recently this spring with Barb Sylvester and uh, Lois Ann Helgeson. We were in the minis in the mini floors. Things were in the mini floors that belonged in the minis, and we moved those to the classes before they got up. They hadn't been judged yet. There were some open blooms that were in the uh, uh, miniatures or in the mini floors, and <clears throat> We took those and put those over where they should be. And this is the way to do that. You read the schedule, you know where things are, but let's face it, folks. A lot of these people, and when it says, hey, five minutes left to get your entries in, that's where a lot of these things happen. They're trying to get the stuff in, and it's easy to mix up in mini and mini flora or open bloom versus the other ones. And so, or it looked to me also like in one of the cases, they already had the tags pre-made out, put them in, but they were much better off in the mini open blooms. So let's see what we can do to uh, mitigate this also. We move it, and get it taken care of, and that will eliminate some disqualifications too. <clears throat> An entry that has been moved to the proper class may not be penalized because it was originally entered in an incorrect class. Okay, we know it can't be disqualified, but it cannot be penalized either for that. So it's got to be judged as it stands on its merits with all the other ones in there, even if the class is rejudged. 
other common class confusion in row shows. Miniature mini floor. I, we just experienced that this spring when we were judging. Dowager, Victorian, and Genesis. Uh, unless you've been growing them a long time and uh, you know which ones they go in, I can see how this happens. And sometimes uh, uh, it's a shame. So they should be put in the right class and judged for, for uh, against their uh, competitors they should be judged against. <laughs> now, blooms that open up the show stamens. They can be moved to open bloom classes. Okay? You can do that so they can compete over there. Uh, we were in a show this spring where it was extremely warm. And we were judging. And it was in a greenhouse. And I can tell you right out that uh, there was stuff that was blowing. And uh, uh, it would have been great to move some of that stuff to the open bloom classes. Last point on this. Climbing hybrid teas, floribundas, and miniatures that do not have non-climbing counterparts are exhibited in the appropriate no climber class. Okay, next slide, please. More disqualification rules. I should have titled this still more disqualification use. Misnamed. Judges must disqualify a misnamed entry writing the correct name on the back of an entry tag. Uncertain of ID accuracy, exhibit is severely punished as not typical of the variety. And that means it probably gets a yellow or a white ribbon or something else. Now, the roses must be exhibited under its, an Ameri uh, under its American exhibition name, AEN. Okay, they've all got this name assigned. The following publications are the ones recognized as listing these American exhibition names. Modern Roses, of course. And then there's the official list of approved exhibition names for exhibitors and judges. The Handbook for Selecting Roses. It's a little book you get every uh, December for the next year with all the new stuff that's in it. Recent registrations on the ARS website. I know of an example just in the last uh, 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 few weeks where a rose was registered uh, uh, on there and, and, and won an award in a rose show. So, you've got to look in those registrations on the website, too. And then there's the online Modern Roses database. Those are the five places. If it exists in there, it's okay. Next slide, please. Oh, good. I don't have a yet still more reasons for uh, disqualification. Roses not outdoor grown, not grown by the exhibitor. Roses must be outdoor grown and by the exhibitor. Well, 99.99% of that always happens. Any entries that do not comply must be disqualified. Again, sometimes it's really hard to prove. Obviously, florist roses must be disqualified. I agree with that. Show rules establishing additional reasons are prohibited. In other words, you can't write a show rule that have different uh, 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 reasons. To, to do that. That's just prohibited. The use of wedging materials prohibited by the show schedule is neither a disqualification nor a penalization. I want to work, we'll go again. If they say they don't want you to use bubble gum, it's still not a disqualification or a penalization. Use of wedging materials prohibited in your schedule can't be used as a disqualification or a penalization. Period. Next slide, please. Entry tags. Oh, yes, the ubiquitous entry tag. Entry tags must include only three items. This is the must. Probably should have capitalized that. The exhibitor's names, which should be hidden. The AEN of the cultivar, the American exhibitor's name, and the class number. Entries may not be disqualified or penalized for use of a wrong tag. A non-ARS tag or failure to fill out the bottom portion of the tag. So you could, don't have to fill out that bottom portion, but you really should in case there's a sweepstakes or other thing that goes wrong. Not all of these are neither a disqualification nor a penalization. 
They may not be disqualified for collections in one container with several varieties. You should have a card listing the varieties which should be added. This is mostly true when you have a base of, uh, usually it's the uh, end of the trail class, or you've got a, uh, uh, something like the Stemler, which has uh, various uh, uh, stems of old garden roses for the National Challenge class, and uh, uh, those types of things. So you can put a card in, and that will mitigate the whole thing. Challenge classes, which call for multiple specimens, each container must have its own tag. In other words, if it's like seven in the Ralph Moore, each container must have its own tag. But only one tag is needed if the class for only one variety separate containers, such as the cycle of blue. You only need one tag for that. Now, if your show has sweepstakes, it may require the bottom of the tag to be filled out to qualify for a sweepstakes award. If you don't fill it out, how can you possibly get the points for that award? Next slide, please. Other issues. Challenge classes. The, school, the show schedule may have special rules or requirements for the entry and or collections. Again, judges, read the schedule. The special requirements, you got to make sure that the entry qualifies by meeting all of those requirements. Entering a challenge class that does not satisfy the composition and staging requirements of the schedule is disqualified for violation of show rules. I wouldn't disqualify it, I would say not per schedule, not done per schedule, something like that. We can take that disqualified out of there and uh, we still get the same thing done in a kinder, gentler way. Shows may have classes with restricted eligibility, classes such as society members only. Yeah, like a, a pick a pair, where the uh, society members pick a partner two weeks before the show, and then they each put a rose in. District members, or novice or junior classes, et cetera, they may be limited to these types of uh, uh, individuals participating in that class. Absent exhibitor is one who cannot be present a colleague enters roses for them. Entries from, ap uh, entries from absent exhibitors are permitted unless the show schedule excludes them. And why wouldn't we include them? We need all the roses in the show we can get. More roses is more beauty. And this is the one thing we want to spread around is the beauty of the rose. Next slide, please. Multiple entries. Separate entries. Oh, I see my boss is there in the back on the ironing board. That's Merlin, by the way, folks. Two entries of the same variety by the same exhibitor will disqualify both entries. Let me tell you a story. Separate entries by two or more exhibitors will disqualify all their varieties. Okay. Once upon a time, we had a national convention in Chicago. Actually, it was the World Federation Convention. My good friend, Don Ballon, three very wonderful roses, and he had this Rubiat, which was a uh, uh, ARS from the 1940s. He had three outstanding stems. He entered the best one in the Nicholson Bowl, which he won. <clears throat> and then he entered one in the open competition. Unknown, unbeknownst to Don, his daughter found this thing as they were uh, uh, cleaning up and it had the tag and everything and it wasn't entered. So she went and put it in the show. Don's queen of the show had to be disqualified because of both entries in there. But he won a Nicholson. So, you know, what the heck. To get more roses in a show, the schedule may eliminate one or both of these rules. I couldn't think of anything that was, would be better. Let's get the roses so the public can see them. If two or more entries were caused by a misclass entry, improperly named or improperly named entry being moved to its proper place, in these cases, only the original entry entered in the proper class or the correct AEN name will be judged. Exceptions to these rules are the junior exhibitors and judges class. Next slide, please. Penalization, we're getting down to the end now. 
An exhibit that has been, penal has been penalized remains in the competition and may receive any award it's eligible for. Well, let's face it, almost every rose that we enter is penalized in points somewhat by the judges to begin with. You know, they're sitting in there saying, this is better and this is better and this is better. Penalization occurs when an exhibit has faults in any of the six prime elements of judging. Bill Kosmichak will take you through all of that week four. Points are deducted according to the degree of impairment. The more serious the impairment and or distraction, the greater the penalization. Penalization is also applied if a rose has been groomed in such a way that the variety's characteristics are grossly altered, such as quilling petals where the variety never quills. Petal remnants and faulty petals may be removed providing it is done skillfully and the form and symmetry are not distorted. The exhibitor remove, may remove anything from the entry without penalization, so long as the result is undetectable by the judge and a better entry is produced. If a single element is the cause of a severe penalization, the judge should note the cause on the upper part of the entry tag in a helpful way. I think that's well put in a helpful way. We're trying to make everybody a better exhibit. Next slide, please. Here we are, look at that. These are four of my favorite judges. Now, last week, Bruce talked about some of the folks that uh, were involved with a judge that was really uh, saying the other judges didn't know what they're doing, all kinds of other things going on. I will tell you that 99.99% of our judges are okay all the time everywhere. But everyone can have a bad day. And our job as judges is to try to, if we involve a situation like that, is to try to bring everybody up to a more comfortable level so that they feel like they, you know, they're not being ostracized and they feel a little better about doing their job as a judge. We are so fortunate to be judging roses. We should be able to do that almost every day, uh, in, in, in these shows and, and have a good time every time we're out judging. Next slide, please. I need to acknowledge Louis Desimera and Dr. Tommy Cairns, who for allowing me to reproduce the copyrighted photos, tables, and diagrams and text from recently published Rose Books. These two Rose Books are these books right here, The International Principles of Exhibiting and Judging, you can probably still get a few copies of this left on uh, uh, eBay. It is by far the best judging book around. It's got great stuff in it. It talks about it. Uh, uh, truly an advancement for judging. We need our judge's manual to look like this. The second one is the Rose Atlas, which was just, I wrote the book review for it in the February, March issue of the magazine. This is a great book uh, to me. This should be used with everything that's in it, the foundations and everything, to re upstart our, our con uh, consulting Rosarian program. Those are my opinions, and uh, I, I think they're really good, and I think in the future we could move forward doing that. Next slide, please. The guy sitting back there on the uh, ironing board by the window, that's this guy, Merlin, and he thanks you for taking your time to listen to his daddy give a talk. Thank you very much, and I appreciate you listening. All right. Thank you, Dr. Plaz, for that. Uh, we will now take questions. If you have any questions, make sure you put those in the questions area. Uh, and once you have that, raise your hand, and we will try to answer those. All right. Okay. Uh, just one second. I'm looking for questions. Let's see. Hi, John. Yes. There's, there's some hands raised on the um, attendee list. Okay. <clears throat> I will go there. I apologize. Fine. Um, I know Jim Beardsley had a question in the question section earlier, so maybe we start with Jim. Okay. 
Let me find you, Jim. Jim, you're unmuted. If you unmute yourself, we'll get started. Thank you, John. Hi, Andy. Hi there, Jim. Fire away. Jim, I just sent you an unmute request. If you could unmute, please. There you I, go. I did. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'll start again. The question result revolves around your definition of exhibition bloom of having no side buds. Now that side buds are allowed on one bloom for stems, does that mean the exhibition bloom definition should be changed or discarded? That's a very good question. And you know, I didn't even think of that. But uh, uh, I think that's something that the committee is going to have to deal with. Certainly, they're saying you shouldn't penalize much for them. But what I had there was two flowers, which had to come off. Now, the difference between uh, an exhibition bloom and an exhibition uh, inflorescence would be that you could have open blooms and stuff on there. But on an exhibition bloom and a one bloom per stem, uh, that, that's a really good question. I don't know the answer to that. I would say uh, uh, I wouldn't penalize it. Okay. But I'm kind of lenient. Well, I'm just wondering if the definition should be changed. Uh, that's that. That's a really good question. I can't do that, but we've got a judges committee that can. I would agree with you on that. Maybe we ought to change it. All right. We will next go to the next question from Bruce Monroe. Bruce, go ahead. I, I need to make a couple of comments. <laughs> Andy, we, we pulled a fast one on you. We, we, we changed the picture so that it's called uh, bloom instead of Corolla because it's not clear that that arrow in the picture is just pointing to the petals seems to be pointing to the bloom so the the current picture says that that's bloom and that's what's on the exam that that, that particular feature should be identified as a bloom and i want to point out one little quirk to the disqualification rules by the way probably the reason that the word disqualification appears in the current judges manual is most of the time it's saying this is not a disqualification because we've taken so many things out that used to be disqualifications, and we're just emphasizing that it's not a disqualification anymore. So there the word disqualification appears. <laughs> but right. um, I, I suppose in the future that that will eventually shrink down even more, which is really good. But the yeah. fact that you got a good start on it and then knocked it down from 64 to 50, maybe we'll be down somewhere near 20 now. Yeah. Uh, I want to mention uh, the, the last question. Uh, what, what the manual says is that it's uh, an exhibition bloom typically, but not necessarily without side buds. So it, it's, uh, we've taken that into account that uh, side buds are permitted, but it says, but not necessarily. So it does not require uh, that there be no side buds, but it says it's generally not the case. That's an excellent way to handle that. Yeah, and let me mention one more quirk in the rules. The rules say no class number, you're disqualified. Wrong class number, we'll put the right class on it and put it where it belongs. So if you don't know the class, don't leave it blank, just put a number in and somebody will correct it for you. Otherwise, <laughs> <laughs> when, I, when we wrote the rules, I said, that's sort of silly, you know, but that, that's what it says. No class number, you're disqualified. Wrong class number, we'll put the right number on it and put it in the right place. So uh, maybe we should change the, the no to, uh, we'll, we'll figure it out for you since that's what we're gonna do if it's wrong anyway. But thanks very much for a great talk. Thank you. All right, our next question is from Jackie Nye. Jackie, I will send you unmute. If you unmute yourself, there you go. I wanted um, to have a, a, a better understanding of the multiple entry by multiple people 
Um, I, I didn't quite get the example and I didn't quite get the wording. Okay, well, it's in the, basically it's in the judge's manual. You can read it online, but multiple people from a garden is uh, uh, husband, wife, kids. Okay? Yeah. And you, in judges' classes, we allow that. If the, both the husband and the wife are uh, uh, judging that, let's say they only have one good bush in bloom, they could each bring a specimen. Uh, and the case of the kids, the kids are from the same garden. I mean, it's on the same plot in the same house. Usually, when they have, they have juniors and stuff like that, they have their own part of the garden that they use. And But what you find in these cases are things that grow well in mom and dad's garden are the same things that will grow well in the junior's garden. And so they may have an entry there too. Uh, but let's just say you have here a, 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 a Hannah Gordon entry by the uh, child and it's a one bloom per stem. And you've got a couple of Hannah Gordon sprays that are in by the parents. And that, that would be allowed in this case, if it's the case of the judges. Uh, if the case was where the parents were uh, 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 from the same garden there, no, we'd allow the kids to have theirs in their class, but the mom and dad would be not being judges. One of those or both of those would be disqualified. That's the way I understand it from what's there. And Bruce can correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, I I, I believe that um, like husband and wife, they're considered a team and they enter one entry under both their names, correct? Right, most people do that. But this is written that way for the judges class for one thing. And, and there are, I can tell you right now, we used to have some folks here in the uh, 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 area, Rich and Gay Schweiger. And uh, uh, Gay would enter minis and shrubs. And Rich, did all he entered was hybrid teas and uh, 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 floribundas. And they were entering the show like that. It's, it's two separate entities. And it worked out fine because they never crossed paths in the judging. <laughs> Good. Thank you very much. All right, our next question comes from John Paz Aldolf Ferber. Let's see here, unmuted you. Go ahead, John. John Pace? Pace, all right. I wanted to make sure I said it right. Sometimes all right. I know them both. Go ahead, John. Looks like we lost John there for a second. I'll send you one more unmute request. There you go, John, go ahead. John, are you there? He may not know how to unmute. There you are, we hear you. John, if you'll raise your hand again, I will come back to you uh, and we'll be looking for you. Oh, there we go. We got you. You're there. I can hear you, John. I believe I can. If you could ask your question, please. Okay. We are going to move to Judy Frederick. Judy, I'll send you an unmute request. There you go, if you could unmute yourself. Judy Frederick, there we go. All right, we'll move to Neva Youngs. Let's see here. Neva, if you could unmute yourself. There you go. I I don't have a question. I just don't know how the hand raising works. So I've learned that much from this presentation. And thank you, Andrew. I enjoyed it very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I lowered your hand, Dr. Satish. And let's see, Satish, unmute. Go ahead, Satish. You hear me? Yes, sir. We can hear you. Uh, great presentation, Andrew. It's so good to see you, sir. You're looking yeah, good. 
Yeah, which I, I could. I don't have any question. Oh, but I did yeah. have a comment though. There was one thing that you said. You have to know them to grow them. I think it is. You have to grow them to know them. Yep. Oh. Right. Um, in our questions, Lee McNeil. I can't unmute you. I see you have your hand up. I'm going to double check to see if we have any more hands. I do have questions. Uh, Linda Fleming in our questions area asked, judging a decorative hybrid tea exhibition stage versus hybrid tea with exhibition form, if the exhibition stage rose is better is better example of its variety than its exhibition form rose, should it win? Is the question. Yes. Okay. Then I also have from Jeanette, uh, Danahy, what was the name of the book on judging recommended? Okay. Hey, John. We'll Not put it on here. Again. International Principles of Exhibiting and Rose Judging by Louis T. Desimero. All right. And uh, I can tell you that this is an outstanding book. I was the uh, number one proofreader for it. And uh, you can still find it a little bit on eBay, probably around 15 bucks. All right. If there's any more questions, please raise your hand. I see Bruce's hand is still raised up, so I'm going to unmute Bruce just to see. Bruce, do you have any more comments? I I guess I, I didn't lower my hand. <laughs> I will lower it for you, no problem. Okay. All right. Next, Dr. Tommy Carnes. Let me unmute. You, Dr. Carnes, you're now unmuted. If you unmute yourself, there we go. Yes, I'm online. Uh, yes, sir. On this business of this this buds, the schedule says one bloom disbudded. So therefore, there has to be a penalty for any disbuds. Right. So, reading the schedule is the controlling factor here. Right. No. And uh, I think we've addressed the buds more than we should talk about because some of them are immature some of them have a little bud so the definition of a side growth is not exactly as clear as it should be and secondly if anybody wants to copy that exhibiting book if they would send an email to me i will arrange the copy to be sent okay thank you very much tommy Thank you, Dr. Carnes. All right, Jackie, Nye, did you have another question? I will unmute you. Nye, I will lower your hand for you. Okay, no, uh, I lowered my hand. I'm all set, thank you. Thank you. All right, Kenneth Schmidt, here we go. I will unmute you, and if, then if you could unmute yourself, there we go. All right, I have a question, just a clarification on a florist rose. If I grow a florist rose in my garden, I can exhibit that rose, can I not? Correct. Yes. Okay. You were saying you couldn't exhibit florist roses. I assume you meant the one you buy. I, I think that's the way the manual is written, yeah. But the, I know there's been a number of florist roses that have been uh, uh, good exhibitors roses. One of the big problems with them is they probably don't winter over where I live. Thank you. Great presentation. Thank you. Hey, John. Yes, ma'am. Um, we got that John Pace Adolf Ferber question. Who won the Queen of Show at the at that World Rose Show in Chicago in 1974? I don't know. I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> I, Don, Donnie would tell a story. Donnie won it, but lost it. <laughs> All right. Do we have any other questions? All right. Tom Mayhew, here we go. I'm going to unmute you. 
Tom, if you, there you go. Okay, um, my question is that decorative form uh, term has been used in the past. Is that the same as exhibition stage? To me it is. The term, the term decorative form. Right, to, to me it is, that's what I look at it. If it, does, if it isn't yeah. an exhibition uh, uh, form, the decorative form, and it can be all kinds of things. You know, you got the green rose. What kind of form is that? You got your uh, uh, roses from uh, uh, the guy over there in England uh, and uh, David Austin. All these other ones here, and uh, and all these things coming out now with uh, proven winners and uh, uh, Will Radler's roses and all the other types of roses that are there. They're almost all in decorative form. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> All right. Next question is from June Hammett. Uh, June, I will unmute you. You can unmute yourself. You can ask a call a question to Dr. Paz. Okay. Hi. Um, I also had a I had a couple of questions actually. Um, one is what takes precedence if the show schedule um, has not been updated or the, the team who is that schedule. Um, what takes precedence, the judge's uh, manual or the show schedule? Show schedule is the law of the show. Period. Okay. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. No. No. All right. So there were a couple of uh, points that you made about moving specimens after uh, they've been entered. Uh, for instance, the hybrid T. If it opens after it's been entered in its hybrid T class, it can be moved and rejudged. Is that pretty standard practice? Or is uh, it just generally commented, oh, no, this is not any good. It's an open bloom. No, uh, uh, that, that is not standard practice. It doesn't happen that often. I can tell you that in the show I judged this spring, we had a couple of uh, miniatures that were that way, and we moved into the mini open bloom class. So it's really the... Judge's choice? No, well, you know, you hate to see something that's nice not get judged at all. And uh, uh, I, I can't remember what, what they got, but they didn't win, certainly. Okay. And the other question I had was a clarification about that point. I think uh, the other uh, young woman brought up about it might be a different, a different bullet. It was the first bullet on a page, and maybe I didn't read it closely, about multiple all entries will be disqualified with multiple entry. I, I might not have read it properly. It was the first bullet on a very full page. Okay. If you, all in one, disqualified. In one class, if you have more entries than the schedule allows, mm -hmm. let's say we're sitting here with uh, uh, some Hannah Gordons, and there's three entries in there that are yours that somehow didn't get. One was a, a, a one bloom per stem, maybe put in the wrong place. And it says you can only have one. They're all disqualified. Right. I understand that part. I think the part the question was about multiple multiple exhibitors. That's primarily a portion put in there for judges and for uh, 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 kids, juniors. Okay. That's. Thank you. And thanks very much. This was a great presentation. Appreciate it. All right, the next hey, person. Don. Yes. Don. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to put this in here. Um, John Pace and Adolf Ferber wrote that the World Rose Show was held in Chicago at the Drake Hotel. Walter Lemire won Queen of Show with Royal Highness. Well, he deserved it. All right. We next have Edward Cunningham. Edward, I'm unmuting you. And if you could unmute yourself. All right, Everybody. that's probably better. Uh, all right, thanks for the presentation. Very interesting. Uh, one thing I did not quite catch just now is you said something about the Rose Show schedule. Uh, is Laura the Land over the uh, guidelines for uh, judging roses? Did, did I hear that wrong? The, the judges have to conform to the schedule. They have to judge it how the schedule is written. Are you referring to challenge and uh, collections? The whole the whole schedule. If it says you can have 
three entries of a, a folklore in the open competition, you can have three entries. It says you can have only one and you have three. That's too bad. You get them disqualified. Right. Sure. Right. So schedule writers, from what I've seen, and it's even worse in arrangement, always have these combinations and permutations of things. Yeah. Which send you off on a tangent. And therefore, that's why it's really important for every judge to read that schedule from beginning to end, even if they've judged that show 10 years in a row and they think they know it. You need to sit down and do it so that it all comes out right for all the exhibitors. The exhibitors are supposed to read it too. Right. Uh, the one thing that I just I wanted to make a clarification of is that when what they got rid of for the uh, disqualifications, when you're saying the show schedule rules, you do not mean that uh, the show schedule could put back in side buds or disqualification or whatever. That's correct. If they, if they put that in a schedule, that's in there. Then. That's the show schedule. That's the rule. No, 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 no. Bruce Monroe, uh, I see you had some comments that you wanted to oh. add in. Well. think Bruce or uh, let's see here uh, Bruce are you there this is Diane yes. oh, oh. am I on yes sir oh I just want to comment that this guidelines is very specific the show schedule rules but the show schedule may not contradict the rules on side buds, stem on stem, entry tags, and wedging materials that you can't put in, as Andy pointed out, that you can't use bubble gum or whatever, anything for wedging material. Any rules that concern wedging materials, entry tags that are inconsistent with the national rules must be ignored. So if the entry, if the rule says you got to fill out the bottom half and people don't fill out the bottom half, you ignore the fact that the, the schedule says you have to fill out the bottom half because the national rules say you don't. Uh, if you want to be considered for sweepstakes and they collect the bottom half for sweepstakes, then yeah, you better fill it out. But if you don't want to be considered for sweepstakes, don't fill out the bottom half. Uh, so, because the, gui the guidelines take precedence. Let me explain this bit about multiple entries. Uh, you know, the, the rule has always been that multiple entries would disqualify both entries. Multiple exhibitors from the same garden in one class would disqualify both entries. And what we said is that the, they can't write national rules inconsistent with the guidelines. So we put in there that fact that the local society can overrule those two rules that they wish to, to get more, more entries. Uh, otherwise, they wouldn't be able to do that. So that's why it's in there, because we say the guidelines are the rules and you can't change them by local rules. And so we specifically said these two rules can be overruled by local rules so you can get more guidelines. I'll get more entries into your show. One, one more thing. I was at the 1974 <laughs> Chicago convention. Don Ballin had a good day. He was installed as president of the American Rose Society. Yep. He won. I, I remember it was the McFarland, but maybe it was the Nicholson. I'm one, one, one of those big awards he won. And he also won Queen of the Show. <laughs> he had a sweep. <laughs> oh, I guess he was on his home territory in Chicago. Was <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Andy. <laughs> OK, you're welcome. All right. Let's see other questions. Let me go to the top. Uh, Donald Johnson, just one second, Donald, I'm going to unmute you. Go ahead. Donald, you had a question? Oops. Donald Johnson. Okay. We're going to move on. Next, let's go to Tom Mayhew. You have your hand raised. I'll unmute you, Tom. You had a question or a comment? Uh, yes, I have, another, I have another question on the uh, approved names for rose entries. 
on your list. I did not see the combined rows list. Is the combined rows list a book still considered um, to have the correct uh, rows entry names, or is it? I didn't see it on your list there. Don't know the answer to that question. That slide was taken directly out of the uh, judge's manual, so I can't answer that for you. It's, it's the Peter uh, Schneider book, you know, the combined know rose list that comes I out every. Yeah. You submit it. Don, um, the current guidelines state that the combined rose list can be used, um, but there's some caveats. I think it's on page four or four of the guidelines is if the variety is not listed in any of the above official ARS publications, the combined rows list may be used as a reference. But check page 4.4 of the guidelines to read, read it in its okay. entirety. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. June, you have a question? June Hammett? I, I did, but uh, it was just answered. Okay. I'll lower y'all. Let's see here. Lee McNeil. I'm going to try. I cannot unmute you uh, on your microphone. Anybody else have any more questions? Just double checking hands. With that, we have no more questions that I can see. Uh, I want to tell you thank you so much uh, for joining us today, uh, Dr. Plies. That was a wonderful program, and I thank you for taking out your time to do this. Uh, we will be sending out the invite for week three on Monday to every person in the district, uh, or in the region, excuse me, and this program will be loaded up onto the American Road Society YouTube page starting this next week so that you'll be able to view that as well. I want to thank John, you again. Yes. John, this is Diane. Actually, I think we're sending it out to all horticulture judges um, okay. across the country so that they can get credit. But yes, so that right. will go out um, early this next week. Yep. Absolutely. Thank you, Diane. With that, that ends this program for today. I hope you will join us next week and thank you for being a part of the American Rose Society. Have a great weekend. Thanks everyone. Thanks. Thank you, Andy. Thanks, Thanks Andy. Bye, Carol. Bye. <laughs>